everyone talking about three ways that you can use perfume sample vials, aka dabbers. It may sound obvious to some, but I know, and I'm sure others are like this, when I first started smelling fragrances and I would get samples, it would be really exciting, they come in the mail, and then it's like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? How do I even open it without it spilling? What's the best way to even use it? And sometimes it could be hard to kind of find different options to do aside from just someone saying, just dab it or something like that. So I figured I'd do this in case it helps anyone else. So first two are pretty standard and the third is what I prefer and like to do the most. And don't see people talk about that often, but let's jump in. So first with the wand and the way to open these in my experience is wiggling it back and forth gently and pulling up. If you just try to pull up really hard, this is going to most likely just kind of like pop off suddenly, spill shit all over the place, and obviously you don't want that. You don't want to get it all over you and you don't want your precious tiny bit of sample wasted. So just kind of pushing back and forth, wiggling, and then you'll kind of feel it give and you can lift it out. The first way is with the wand. So once in a while you'll get these and the top does not have the one and it's just this tiny cap but usually that's not the case so with this you can you know do it how you prefer but sort of like dab it there swipe it against wherever you want to try it on dip it in again sort of get it a little more stuff on it i often like to test them here in my hands and stuff like that like for example if i'm wearing something else on my arm or wrist or that way i can easily wash it off if i don't like it so personal preference but that's something that I do recommend so yeah that's one way using the wand type thing to just you're not going to get very much at a time with that that's a problem because especially if it's something that's really light doesn't have much you know projection or longevity it's harder to get a feel for it if it's just like oh a tiny little dab with that so that is one way though and usually if as long as it's not too light you know not by Joe Malone or something like that you can usually kind of use this method if you need to so that's one way the second way is actual like dabbing basically so this it seems like it would spill all over the place, but it actually doesn't usually come out quite like that. So, you know, again, opening it, wiggling it back and forth, say there, and you wanted to do it on your wrist, just kind of like pushing it up against it and go like that. And then, you know, what, however you want to kind of rub it in. Again, it's open, holding the wand, do it like that. So it's kind of against it and then just tilt you might have to do it a couple times to get however much you want on there. Yeah, and then you can kind of start to smell. Give it a second to sort of start to dry into your skin before putting it right up to your nose, usually, because otherwise the kind of initial blast of perfumer's alcohol might get you. But the third way is what I vastly prefer doing, especially before I test anything on skin. So get a perfume test strip, and you might be thinking, like, well, that's not going to fit in that tiny-ass little thing. but. Cut it in half down the middle first. Okay, so first of all, now either one of these halves will fit in it, but I, you know, so I can get the most use out of it, what I usually do is then cut these into three pieces. So one. And now I've got six of these type of size pieces, which is definitely enough, as you can see, compared to the bottle. So then I would be, you know, wiggling it open again. And what I like to do is have like a little paper towel or a piece of paper or something that I can kind of rest this on while I'm, you know, doing whatever else with it open, because otherwise you're holding it, it can like kind of get on stuff or just is inconvenient. So resting that on something, uh, and then there's this, there's that, dip it in. And voila, now you have it. And the thing is, this also gets, this is kind of the best of multiple worlds because it still keeps 99% of the liquid in here. So if you were giving it away to someone else because you don't like it or reselling it after you sample it or something like that, you're not using any significant portion of it, yet you're getting a major dose of it because this com is so thickly dipped in it that when you smell it, then you can really get a lot of the essence. In my experience, even more so than when I flat out use a spray one and spray it on a test strip. So that works really well for me. And I've tested a lot comparing it, you know, to each method, how does it end up smelling on skin? And the other thing you can do with this, it usually is thick, you know, has so much liquid on it. If you smell it and you like it and you want to try it on skin, you can kind of just like press it on after that. It might sound a little silly, but it does work uh, typically as long as, you know, you dunk it enough and it gets wet enough. So then just clicking it back into place. 
snap, and that is it. So yeah, my preferred method is definitely the last one of cutting up the test strips into sizes that fit in it, dunking it right in. That helps so much with truly getting a scent for it to me compared to dabbing. Also, if I'm sometimes giving away the samples afterwards, I don't want to use the dabber, be, you know, in case that's unhygienic to give it to somebody else or something. So yeah, I definitely recommend the perfume test strip method. You can get a big packet of perfume test strips for pretty cheap, and especially when you're making each one last six vials. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal. So hopefully this helps someone if you weren't sure how to use them before. Feel free to leave a question if you have any other, you know, you aren't sure about some other aspect of the vials, but it can be frustrating at first to not use the spray, but actually there are some nice aspects to it. Like first of all, you know, everything about how easy it is with the test strip here and kind of getting a better feel for it that way. And also just the fact that you can save so much money getting these little vials versus a lot of places the minimum decant size they'll do is a two milliliter which would cost usually at least twice what this does so also it's not putting as much in the air you can test more without worrying about you know if you have a roommate or just anybody around that it's gonna there are some i've tested that are so strong that even when i just like dip it in this someone can smell it from a room away, let alone if I sprayed it, that would really be game over. So yeah, I really like using this method. Hope it helps somebody else out. If you use something different to test uh, dabber vials, let me know.